All right, the only database abstraction you ORMs need. are an indirection over your database, an attempt to make SQL obsolete. But solving problems in general ways mean one of two things. Either By the way, this, the intro, it, this guy gave you zero. There was no foreplay in this one. Okay, we're going straight in. I hope everybody's ready. We're going straight in. All right. It's a technological breakthrough or a middle-of-the-road trade-off with existing tech. And I think you already know where ORMs fall. Honestly, it's an abstraction most people use so they don't need to learn SQL. And starting out, it might work well, but eventually you will end up with code that looks like this. I mean, these are good observations. By the way, if you use an ORM to avoid learning Squeal, you've done yourself a disservice. Squeal is really easy. It's not like it's crazy. Uh, there's plenty of things that like, uh, there's squeal builders that can help you build. I think squeals, squeal builders are pretty fine to use and they can do a lot of the, um, they can do a lot of the sanitization for you. There's a lot of already pre-built knowledge on sanitization, how to handle it. Take a moment to understand like ORMs aren't all great. They aren't all bad. Sometimes they're fantastic. Sometimes they suck, right? Like make sure that if you use an ORM, you use one that allows you to break out into some raw squealing because what's going to ultimately happen at the end is that you're going to be very upset and you want to be able to raw dog, okay? You just want to raw dog squeal sometimes. As your use cases become more complex, your time will be occupied. Yes, the only reason why a squeal is difficult is because of shit database design. This is 110%. This is 110%. Occupied by just reading the ORM's documentation and how it interacts with the I database. Don't like fast That's when fast the underlying issue starts becoming apparent. An ORM attempts to store your data in an object-oriented format. It's a virtual object store running on top of your physical relational database, and the two are by definition incompatible. It's a well-known issue, the object relational impedance mismatch. Just take the inheritance problem. <laughs> Just get wrecked by the old mismatched impedance problem dude i like that just dropping the bombs like that sorry it doesn't work say we have a person student and graduate student orms would create a table for every unique class but graduate student is still a person meaning it should be found when querying that table so the orm store the primary keys in the fourth table to ensure they are unique all of a sudden what should be a simple index select is a join to get a piece of data by its primary key not this is actually this is first off this is this is no not penis mismatch impedance mismatch um this is actually a really this is actually a really good example where you should definitely design your database and then maybe consider an ORM not use the ORM to design your database you can get into some weird situations this is to mention really all the extra complexity we get from Welcome having to Costco to okay this I is love every you. single video today I have yet to turn off alerts I don't know what's wrong with me I used to be so good at this I take a 15 day break or whatever it was and now I literally have negative IQ just like you viewer with negative IQ approximate the relational aspects compare the very simple case of creating a table I would argue that the two ORMs are less understandable than SQL. They are leaking it all over, just with a different syntax. Or let's look at this one, when we are trying Fair. to select an object by the primary key. The ORM generates this SQL, which instead of being an index lookup, must do a full scan of the entire table. And we can't tell because we're one indirection too far from the database. I don't know how much these things still exist. I don't know how often this type of stuff still happens to be a real thing. But I do know that there are some issues in which ORMs will produce less than optimal squeal, right? Like unless if you are fully understanding all squeal being sent uh, out to uh, the database, you don't actually know what is happening. Like, is it good? Is it bad? Where's your boyfriend at? I don't even know. The dev had no chance to notice. They just had to debug after their production environment became unresponsive. And every ORM has to give you a leaky abstraction of SQL to support at least some more advanced use cases other than just find by ID. They all fall into one of three classes of query families. Query by example, query by API, or query by language. And they are all bad. Let's just look at the queries for logging in. Just typical 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 work day right there that's just a typical work day me working in react user 
for query by example, you would Quick just take your model, tears. fill in username and password, execute the query, and then check that some model was returned. If so, it succeeded. And if it's null, the login failed. By the way, I dislike this 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 style very, very much. I don't see why people prefer this over uh, raw doggin, some squeal. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm old or something. Uh, I don't know. Simple enough. And actually works for this use case, but what if we need to find users that don't have a particular username or count how many have the same first name? We simply can't. Query by API is, well, this. Is that true? Hold on, let's go back to that. Check that some model was returned. If so, it succeeds. Isn't there, isn't there like some sort of many? I assume this thing just turns into a, a select. And if it's null, the login failed. Simple enough. And actually works for this use case. But what if we need to find users that don't. I mean, I guess this, this, this is a more compelling case, right? You have to try to select users that you can't, that aren't like this. What ORM can't do this basic thing? I don't know. Can uh, I, I haven't played with, I, I guess I haven't ran into the case. Can Drizzle do a not like? This totally depends on the implementation. Yeah, the other one, I, I don't know about this whole multiple username, user thing. Or count multiple... how many have the same. Yeah, oh, count. Yeah, counting. I mean, again, when you get into these situations, I don't know if it can count. I don't know how many have this ability to be able to count how many exist like this. But if they do. Seems, I mean, it seems reasonable. This seems like a, a, a normal use case. I would see, I, I would feel a little surprised if they can't do that. Drizzle can use uh, squeal template strings for that. Yeah, we can do that in OCaml. Of course, you can do that in OCaml. You can do that in everything. Oh, so, okay. So, I wouldn't be surprised if all these cases aren't covered by ORMs. So, First this feels name. like a little bit of a. We simply can't. Query by API is, well, this. Just SQL, but you call functions instead. I User find all where these things happen, uh, then do all these rows, not found. Okay. Shouldn't happen, but inevitably at some point it will. Yeah. Yes. Uh, username, password, probably a bad example, but just let's get the idea. Okay, let's get the idea. I don't know about you, but to me this seems more complex than just a corresponding SQL. Query by... Well, no. Okay, so that was... I, I also feel like that was a slightly unfair... Uh, uh, comparison because this one does the squeal right so this statement right here would be the equivalent of functions instead i don't know about you but to me this seems on. more complex than just a correspond yeah so i mean so here's the problem is that you still have to handle the not there case so there, you still have to have something that takes it and then does the whole error handling side so he is missing the error handling side and is this simpler? Some people might find this harder. I don't know. I'm not convinced that this is easier or harder. To me, this is, I know, password-like. I know, like. I know, just let it go. Remember, I said he used bad field examples for their naming. Because you wouldn't do like, like, I mean, he could have used anything last name, right? Last name. It would have worked out perfectly. Uh, it would have worked out perfectly with last name, right? We wouldn't have worried about it. Uh, yeah, we also had to do some sanitization. There, are, I, I assume sanitization is part of it. Password is is uh, password like is hilarious. It is hilarious. Either way, I, I get what he's saying, but I'm not sure if I love these examples. Like, I do think that there's a there's a ton of things that are really difficult. Hey, Smitty, thanks. Smitty's weightlifting. Thanks for the five gifted subs. There is. Let Tim cook. We're trying to let Tim cook. But there is, I like what he has to say, and that the complexity of uh, ORMs, you just write so much more code to accomplish the same thing that's not hard and squeal. Like, I like that. The examples I think he are giving, like, especially the password part, is a little bit confusing. I think it's throwing off. It's deterring from the actual conversation. Make SQL. Query by language is just something like this or SQL with extra annotations. Also, what is this? Is this acceptable partner? Is it executed in the database or in code? And of course, this does a full table scan and it might even do a cross join, which would be terrible, but we don't and can't know unless we run the app and check the query the ORM creates. Oh, also, have you seen this? Latency numbers every... I didn't get, I, 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 I didn't quite get this as previous example. Um, if your ORM is adding stored procedures, 
I mean, I agree that this looks terrifying. Whatever this is, this looks very scary. Whatever's going on here, likely Link. I thought Link was always inverted how it did things. But whatever's going on here, this this looks terrifying. It looks like C Sharp, yeah. Also, what is this? Is this acceptable partner? Is it executed it's not like, yeah, in Link the is database inverted, or right? in code? And of course, this does a full table scan and it might even do a cross join, which would be terrible, but we don't and can't know unless we run the app and check the query the ORM creates. Oh, also, have you seen this? Latency numbers, every programmer should know. When we read from a database, we send the data over the network. Clearly, the size matters enormously to the latency of the website. ORMs generally just select all data, the equivalent of a select star, not even allowing you to attempt to tune it. Again, probably fine for most use cases, but when you need to optimize, you are unable to. I will also say one big issue that seems to be far more... By the way, that was a good point, which was when you select all the data, you do necessarily incur a much larger cost when transferring a across the network. And so being able to select out individual fields is good. I'm sure there's lots of ORMs that do that, but it may not be clear how they do that. Uh, and it may require more programming just to get those names in there. Uh, ORMs do allow you to select fields, but I'm not sure exactly. How, like, first off, how do those select fields work? Like Planet Scale, I know that what they have is they have an entire driver that does in-memory joins, right? Select into your mom. Okay, fair. But really, uh, like uh, Planet Scale, they 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 do big selects and then they do the joins programmatically in a Rust driver, like that. They, they've talked about that. I know they've been wanting to shore some things up about that, but that's like a real cost your application is going to incur when you have to do those kind of things in memory rather than on your separate server in a database that goes nice and slick and fast and does all of them for you, right? So out trying to out-program so you don't know exactly what you're getting at all times. Now, PlanetScale may have changed what they've been doing. I don't want to like say uh, that they're terrible. I, I don't know if they've changed those things, but from the last time I read, which was just like six months ago, they were still doing things like that, which is, you know, that you just may not realize what you're getting yourself into. ORMs can also have some bad optimizations. Uh, they can have missing features, right? Uh, let's see, is that, let's see, hold on. My, the, let's see, in my opinion, the biggest problem with ORMs uh, is that queries are not portable. You basically need to run your project with the debugger to run your query or to rewrite this query with squeal manually. Uh, this uh, is the worst one for me. That's actually a really cool point. I guess I never really thought about that. I never really thought about like the interoperability of debugging and creating and crafting a query. For me, a big thing that I have to do a lot, or I used to do a lot at Netflix, I haven't had to do it lately, is that I had to go like log into the big data portal and go to Hive and play around with test tables and actually create, um, like craft a query to be able to get some data out, do some joins, really kind of like sift through all the things I need to do. And then I have to take that query and I just raw dog run that on a little tool that I have. Whereas if I had an ORM, I'd have to then figure out how to convert that query into how the ORM states those things, which I think can be a bit more difficult. You mean Prisma? Oh, you're right. It was Prisma. My bad. Not Planet Scale. Retract everything I said about Planet Scale. It was Prisma that does that, which is an ORM. Not Planet Scale. Prisma. Sorry, I got that. I got them confused. My bad. Uh, but like, that's a real. That is a real thing to think about. Which is how do you translate your queries and test your queries when you have them in uh, ORMs? Just something to think about you know what i mean common but, but hey i do want to say that i love the idea of orms i love the idea of just having objects autocomplete everything just works you just put the things in and bada bing bada boom right with orms is not being transactionally correct meaning you write some data then you try to read it to write something else depending on the result clearly you expect the read to succeed you just wrote the data but because it's not running in the transaction, another query came in here, ran before your read, deleted the data, and what should be infallible fails. Sure, it's also possible when just using SQL, but it seems more common with ORMs. I guess because most... Yeah, I, I assume ORMs have transaction mode. I assume you can say like dot transaction. I mean, I assume a lot. there's a, some ORMs that exist. I get what he's saying, which is that you do run yourself into some, some sort of weird situation. Uh... Like, I, I totally get the things he's saying. Some do that by default. That also sounds bad, right? Like, that sounds equally as bad. ORMs doing it by default sounds equally as bad as ORMs not doing it by default.
or not exposing it so that you understand that you're doing it or not you don't really realize these things again i still think knowing raw squeal is always going to be more beneficial than knowing a program that translates into raw squeal i just don't i don't i, I agree with a lot of the things he's saying it's just how he's making it come about seems a bit odd users think of it as an object-oriented environment without multiple writers so we get this massive data correctness problem with that being said there are good reasons to use orms I they like give that. you some nice tools like convenient utilities to migrate tables automatically that is when you need to add more fields to a table like adding age to your user the migration is automatically checked into version control and if you need to roll back things just keep working personally i prefer that's good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have heard Prisma has an amazing database uh, migration path and that people love using Prisma specifically for that fact. I like that. Yeah, this does not scale. I've done literally this thing right here. This is something I have done where I have all the migrations I've ever done in Squeal that gets executed. Like when you want to create a new database, it's like dot, 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 dot. I've done this. Just creating separate SQL files with update table statements and checking those in, but I see the value. You could also argue that abstracting away the database is a really good feature as well. But eh. let's be realistic. Most people would be just fine using the same database everywhere. You probably... That is like, this is such a good take. This is such a good take. This idea of abstracting away a database is just stupid. Don't abstract away a database. It, it, does, it literally makes no sense. You're probably going to use the same database until you absolutely explode, and then you're going to desperately try to use Cassandra, which you're a loser because you didn't choose Scylla. And you're going to be confused. You're going to be in shambles. You're going to be absolutely confused. Like, why, why would you add a layer of indirection like that? When you're going to be using Postgres, you know you are. Postgres, Postgres squeal. Like, you know you are. Like, that's it. You'll be using it for the life of your product. And if for whatever reason you actually become successful where you have thousands of engineers and your data no longer scales you will be able to hire the right people to abstract it at the at that point right you will be able to do the right thing then don't like if if postgres does not work for your your uh what's it called uh, your your current app you're probably doing things way wrong right you're probably doing it way wrong that's all i have to say don't plan i mean there's an old joke that we uh, that has been made many a times where I work, which is uh, we didn't plan for massive massive success, and it's true, and that caused some growing pains. But at the same time, if you pre-plan for massive success, you may just intentionally create growing pains in which you don't even need. It's stupid. It don't work at large enough scale where that's a bottleneck. It's a solution invented for a problem that should have never existed, but it happens. You will probably still use footage? some specific feature and end up with non-database agnostic code anyway. Other good reasons include connection pooling, deserializing query results into data structures. I love these two, by the way. Input yep. validation, etc. Yep. yep, those are all In great. the end, ORMs are kind of awkward and suffer a lot from the last mile problem. They are so close to a 100% complete solution, but fall just short. I would say use the parts that make sense for you. Maybe even consider using something like Golang's or Rust's SQL X, which is what I tend to do most of the time. Just don't constrict yourself too much to the ORM's self-imposed paradigm and unlock the real value of your database. That's it for the video. Please like. I love that ending. That ending was so good. It was so, so very, very good. I absolutely loved it. everything he said after, like the first parts, I don't think his examples were super compelling. But right afterwards, I think everything after, like he just nailed it, just destroyed the, the second half of this video, which is just so right. Um, there is a lot of cool things, like, right? I really do enjoy or I like the idea. Like I said, I like the idea of of type completion and all these things and just kind of doing all that. Uh, or if you're using an ORM, pick an ORM that allows you to raw dog, right? You you use the ORM for the simple things. And the moment you need to do anything complex, I'm always super, super, super skeptical about using ORMs. ORMs for type safety is fine, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's kind of nonsense. 
I'm just going to be real about the whole ORMs for type safety. Like, it's nice because it comes with named fields, so you make sure you never mess up your squeal. Like, I like that part. That part's nice. It has field named safety, right? I like that. But on the way out, you know what that thing's doing, right? Right? You know, you know what a type safe database ORM's doing. It's going through a row, grabbing out a bunch of named fields, putting them into an object and as this user. Like it's doing exactly what you would do and as user or as whatever. It's casting the object. It's forcing the object into something. I just don't believe that it's somehow that much more magical, right? This type safety business is just like a, it is an odd argument because you would do the exact same thing either way. It's either you do it or a program does it. I prefer, I prefer programs that do it, right? Hydration magic, much better. I could do uh, hydration magic, you could do hydration magic, but at the end of the day, you're still just taking some raw dogged object and calling it a user, right? This is not, uh, you know, just automated, yeah. IntelliJ gives type safety and autocomplete as LSP, very nice, yes. Yes, there's a lot of plugins too that can read your database, and long as you have the credentials available in like the .env or whatever, it will actually go through and say, hey, you've misnamed this field. If you already have that, that alone is 95% of what you're getting out of, you know, uh, out of ORMs. I love squeal. I said it. Yeah, hydrate these nuts. Absolutely. I got someone with iLadies the other day. Let's go. iLadies comment. Hey, by the way, uh, YouTube, do you know what uh, iLadies are? Have you heard of iLadies? Uh, you're not allowed to say e-girl anymore. You have to say iLadies. If you don't understand, just ask me in the comments below. I'll let you know. The name is I just use my left hand and it feels slightly awkward. A jet.